I got a six! This might be one of the most fascinating parts of Dutch culture, but it's controversial that a score of six is praised. Could this be the secret to why the Dutch are so happy? A culture of just good enough? Or is it a recipe for a mediocre life? Ik hoop dat ik vandaag een zes haal. This is the Dutch culture of sixes. I remember when I first got my test score studying in the Netherlands, a seven. But then some Dutch students were so happy because they just got sixes. And then they told me that a seven is actually quite good, maybe too good. Because a six is actually a student 10. For those that aren't familiar with the Dutch culture of sixes, let's hear from a former student and current educator. The sixes culture is that um, mostly in high school when students are like 13, 14, 15, and when they are um, adolescents and puberty, and they, they don't mind that much about their grades, they just want to pass and have a good time. Um, and a lot of Dutch parents will not push them to have high grades, but they will just be more concerned about their well-being. And so I spent hours and hours reading comments from Reddit, from YouTube, to try to understand more. And there seems to be two groups. There's a group that is proud of the Sixes culture. They say it's about efficiency. So students will want, uh, who participate in Sixes culture will be very proud if they get like a 5.5 .5 because like, oh, I did the bare minimum, but I, I got like the maximum result out of it. There's more room for their, uh, their personal development and not just having high grades. Well-being. So your personal health and well-being is valued more than um, achieving thing things. And there's another group that's against it. They say it's actually a negative term. These people are lazy, they lack ambition and a good work ethic. And it's become quite mainstream today. There's even a saying about it. Better a 6 zonder stress than a 7 zonder leven. Hey, man, that's cool. Whereas in the US, the mentality is more like this. Do something that brings you closer to greatness. That's your choice. Now, I grew up in a society that praised the A players, not the C players. But it's more than that. It's really about realizing one's full potential. But then the Dutch are actually quite known for their innovations. Did they do that with a sixist mentality? Or do they have a secret that the world doesn't know about? In this video, let's dive deeper into the sixist culture, how it compares to America's performance culture. And then we'll look into the pros and cons of the Dutch culture of sixes using the latest neuroscience. Two in three Dutch students make no effort to get higher grades than necessary for their exams. This was the finding of a large-scale European study that Dutch students were the most satisfied with just passing or getting a six. Only 34% of Dutch students wanted to get the highest grades possible compared to the European average of 59%. It's been a controversial topic in Dutch culture and education. Some argue that modern day society is becoming more performance-like, which could lead to more mental health problems. In fact, almost 20% of the Dutch population is experiencing some symptoms of burnout. And that's also why many Dutch medical programs are planning or thinking about dropping the cum laude designation. And as of 2023, there are no more excellent schools, a title that was given to schools that had high quality education, because these titles could lead to more competition, more stress. In the US system, most cannot do well with just a sexist mentality, but one can get by in the Netherlands due to the system. Let me explain. In the Netherlands, at the important age of 12, a student goes from elementary to high school. And where a kid goes to high school is based on the results of a standardized test and the advice of the elementary school. There are three main types of high school. VMBO prepares students for MBO, which is like a junior college that prepares students for a vocation or trade. HAVO prepares students for University of Applied Sciences or HBO, more practical. VWO prepares students for University, WO, which is the most theoretical and often referred to as the highest level of higher education. And once a student gets into high school, one only needs to maintain a six in order to move to the next level. And studies show that something interesting happens when someone gets into high school. Grades drop from the first year to the third year. Now, during the first week of my master's program, each of us gave a presentation about our country's education system. When the Dutch students presented, they told the class that high school was relatively easy. They didn't really experience stress until university. And I was surprised because high school for me was one of the most stressful periods of my life. In the US, going to a high school is mostly dependent on your location. But after high school, you can either go to a community college, a state school, or a public or private university. But how well you do in high school 
school determines what college you get into. And it's not just your grades because acceptance into a university in the US depends on many factors. It's really competitive, especially if you want to get into an Ivy League school like Harvard or Stanford where only 4% get in. And that's why so many kids are ecstatic when they finally get accepted into their dream school. <laughs> Now let's talk a bit about grades. Did you know that the average grade point average of an acceptance into Harvard is 4.2 out of four? That's because you can get above a 4.0 in the US if you take advanced placement classes or honors classes. These are more difficult classes and you get more points. Has a grade point average of 11.8. And in the US, your high school or university grades can depend on a curve. This means that your grade is dependent on how you compare against other students in the class. So this kind of creates this competitive culture that is based on grades. Well, let's hear from a Dutch teacher who teaches American students. For Dutch students, I guess a six is enough, but they still are interested in the learning process. And for the American students, often the grades are very important, more important than really learning. This is a very important point. Because the American education system is so centered on grades, students focus more on getting good grades than actually learning. Maybe that's why Americans have this reputation of... If you met someone from Amsterdam, what nationality would they be? I have no idea, Amsterdamian. <laughs> Amsterdamian. <laughs> The Dutch system, on the other hand, is based on pass-fail, meaning that if someone gets a 5.5 or 6, they pass and move on to the next level. But many also pointed out that passing or getting a 5.5 or 6 in the Netherlands is harder than other countries like the US. For example, I got a 3.6 GPA or a 7.7 .7 doing my bachelor's in the US compared to a 7.98 doing a master's in the Netherlands, which is kind of comparable. But again, in the US, it depends on what kind of school you get into. To. If you go to a top school, it's a lot harder to get a good GPA because you are in a class with the top students around the country and in the world. The other thing to note is that rankings matter a lot more in the US. It's all about standing out, the brand name college, the brand name job, the brand name company. And if you want a brand name company in the US, going to a good college helps. And going to a good college is going to be dependent on your grades. But in the Netherlands, most of the universities are pretty good and when it comes to finding a job after graduation, getting good grades matter more in the US. For example, almost everyone I knew had their grade point average on the resumes after graduation. But what I found interesting in the Netherlands is those that want to excel and do excel, they are sometimes looked down upon. And this could be explained by the do normal concept in the Netherlands or the tall poppy syndrome. Because Dutch society has been taught to act normal, to not stand out, to stand in. Whereas Whereas in American culture, it's really about standing out and being unique and different. So now that we've talked a bit about the Dutch sixes culture, what are some of the pros and cons? Let's start with the pros. Efficiency. The argument is that if you do just enough to pass, you save a lot more time to do other things. To me, a passing grade of six equals the optimal result with the least amount of effort. If I have higher than a six, then I've studied for too long. And here's an example that I've heard several times. At the end of the year, a student understands what score he or she needs in order to pass. And so they spend the time to calculate what is the minimum grade that I need in order to pass the final exams. It's about working smarter, not harder. And a person like Bill Gates would choose a lazy person to do a hard job because the lazy person will find an easy way to do it. And sixes culture could lead to happier kids. Now, could this be the reason why Dutch kids are the happiest in the world? There's this famous study done on decision making and happiness that was captured in the popular book, The Paradox of Choice, Maximizers versus Satisficers. The maximizers were those that spent more time trying to find the best choice and also potentially the best grade. Now, the satisficers are those that spend the least amount of time trying to find a choice that's good enough. And what they found from the research is that while maximizers achieve more, it was the satisficers who were happier. It's all about expectations. And if we look at the happiness equation, 
equation, which is reality divided by expectations. For satisficers, because they have low expectations and they're okay with good enough, as a result, they tend to be happier. Because when you don't need to compete and you only need to pass, there's less pressure to get higher grades and you tend to compare yourself less. Because the larger societal problem today is that people are comparing themselves more and more today compared to the past. And this rise of perfectionism, which is linked to maximizers, tends to lead to mental health problems as well. Which leads me to my most important point. The US education system favors the maximizers and drills perfectionism into students, whereas the Dutch education system supports the satisficers. Let's continue. Now, what are potential cons or implications of having a sixes culture mindset? Students may not reach their full potential. If the argument for a sixes culture mindset is efficiency, it really depends on what that extra time is used for. Someone told me that his brother has a sixes culture mentality, but he spends his extra time playing video games and on social media. At the same time, kids today are spending more and more time on social media. And many studies show that social media is bad for your mental health. And we know from neuroscience that our brains grow a lot as teenagers and young adults. And our brains actually grow when we struggle and do hard things, a concept called neuroplasticity. So depending on what you're doing with that extra time, doing just enough could prevent people from realizing their full potential. And sixes culture kids may not get the better jobs and opportunities. The research on maximizers and satisficers do show that maximizers are the ones that get better and higher paying jobs. And when it comes time to look for a job, especially in the business world, your grades can help you. And from my experience working in HR, it's really the ones that do do more that get promoted, that do better in the business world. I also want to point out that I know in the Netherlands, there are certain programs where your grades do matter, where there's a selection process. And lastly, there is also a negative perception of the sixes culture. While some may brag about it in the school system, outside the school system and in the real world, there seems to be a negative perception of the sixes culture. People lack ambition. They lack work ethic. At the same time, time there were a few comments and people that said depending on the profession they would rather have someone with an eight mentality versus a sixes mentality. If somebody is studying to be a doctor you want them um, to have the highest grades because if they're operating you they have to know what to do so then a six is not enough. So could this be why the Dutch are so happy? Well, not quite. But one thing I've learned about the sixes culture in the Netherlands is that the system here allows for it compared to other countries. And it's also socially accepted to get a six. For some, they argue that it's about efficiency. They save time. It's about well-being. For others, they see it as a negative. People don't realize their full potential. But I do appreciate the fact that good enough is accepted here in the Netherlands. As for myself, Ever since moving to the Netherlands, I've also learned to be more okay with good enough. Now, that doesn't mean that I'm not going to try my best, but it means for me that I am more okay with being okay. Because in society, there's room for not only A and B players, but also C players. Some people want to excel. Some people want to excel and can only get sixes. And some people are okay with just a six. Okay, well, I have a few questions for you. What do you think about the Dutch sixes culture? Does it work out later in life in the workplace? And if you're not from the Netherlands, how does this type of mindset compare or contrast to your countries? I'm curious to learn to hear from you and your experiences. Please share them in the comments below, and I hope you take care.